everyone. It's, it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, in addition to being the parent of three Wellington alums, I am, uh, as was mentioned, on the board and I, I chair the board. And I also, co co I'm a co-organizer of TEDx for Columbus and my fellow co-organizer, I'm, I'm a little sick today so bear with me, Ruth Milligan is here. She really does all the work and um, I know was helpful in organizing things for today. Um, I've had the great pleasure of being a member of the TED community for a number of years and attend the TED, Big TED conference in California and have found it to be very inspirational um, and has, has really been a gift in my life and added so much to my life. So when I heard that Wellington was doing our own TEDx, it was really exciting for me and I'm delighted to be a participant in it. So I'm going to talk, my, my talk is really focused on kind of what I was thinking about when I was your age. But before I get into what I was thinking about when I was your age, I thought I would take a few minutes and talk about me now. So what am I doing now? And some of you know this and some of you don't. Um, so as I mentioned, in addition to being a parent, which by far is my favorite job, I am a business owner and I founded a business called Resource and I founded it in 1981, so almost 32 years ago, with Apple Computer as my very first client at a time when people thought it was kind of crazy for this company that I was going to be helping was named after a piece of fruit. It was super unusual, if you can imagine a time, which I'm sure is very hard for any of you to imagine. But our company has grown to be nearly 400 people that's scattered across four different offices. In addition to Columbus, we have an office in, Cle in Cincinnati, in Chicago, in San Francisco. And we have grown to be the largest independent digital agency, which just means we're not owned by a ginormous conglomerate and we own it ourselves. And we also have grown to be the largest female advertising business in the country. Um, we have been recognized by our peers for our work and we also, like Wellington, have been recognized as the best place to work by a variety of organizations including the Wall Street Journal. We have um, the great fortune to work with a number of very large brands, and our work is really focused in four areas, in e-commerce, um, e-commerce sites, social work, mobile work, like apps and that sort of thing, and then experience design of various digital properties. And so it's very creative, it's very technical. Those of you that have been to our office know it's very casual, people are dressed in shorts, we let people bring dogs to work. Um, it's it's real. No one has an office, including me. It's it's a very open environment. So, so that's what I've been doing for the last 32 years. But I'm going to go back to me at your age. Okay. This is the home that I grew up in. I was born and raised in Columbus and have lived here my entire life. This is 1461 Kennard Road on the east side of Columbus and you can see it was a rather modest home and um, you know obviously I'm dating myself big time by the car that's in the driveway there which I don't know that there are very many of those around anymore but um, this is where I grew up and I just had an older brother and um, uh, I went to public school, um, and then I went to, I, I went to, um, this is me in kindergarten, and uh, I show this picture because I'm just painting a, a picture that when I was little, I was very sensitive. I was a very sensitive child. Like, my mother would run the vacuum cleaner and I would cry because it made me nervous. So the first time I had my school picture taken in kindergarten with all the lights, 
I cried like crazy, which is the picture that's on the left here. They finally calmed me down, and I was able, they were able to capture the smiling Nancy. Um, my mother loved the picture that was of me on the left and prominently displayed it in our home. And uh, the truth is, is that if you could see the picture itself, there's tears on it. I tried to crumble it. I was so embarrassed that she was displaying this picture of me crying, and I, I was kind of mortified. So, um, but now I'm gonna, you're going to get a huge kick out of this. I'm going to be super open and vulnerable, and I'm going to show you a picture of me in high school in go-go boots, okay? Are you ready for this? So here I am. I am, I was on the drill team at Eastmore, which is Eastmore High School, Columbus Public School, um, which is, I was a warrette. And I'm showing this to you because I just wanted to kind of put myself at where, you know, so you could see me when I was your age. And when I was your age, the kinds of things that I was thinking about, the voice in my head was, was this. I thought I was stupid. I mean, in today's terms, frankly, my older brother kind of bullied me. We didn't use that term when I was growing up. But the truth is, my brother always told me that I was stupid. And I believed him because he told it to me so often. He also used to refer to me as the dumb blonde. And to be perfectly honest, on many occasions, my own mother would say this about myself. I certainly did a whole bunch of things that were stupid. We all do. But I wasn't stupid. But I didn't understand that when I was your age. I thought I was fat. I thought I was a loser. I thought that I just really was not worthy. That's how I felt when I was in high school. And the truth is, there wasn't really a lot of privacy at 1461 Kennard Road. It was hard to get away from my brother and my mother. And so what I found myself doing on a very regular basis was escaping to our local library. And I was driven to do this because I could be in a world of books that was very far away from the life that I was living at 1461 Kennard Road. And it was also air conditioned there. And we didn't have air conditioning in our home. And so it was rather oppressive in the summer. And so I would spend hours on the linoleum floor at the local library reading books. And so what I found myself being drawn to is I found myself being drawn to books about Africa. Maybe it was because I loved animals, which I've always loved my whole life, or maybe it was because it was the farthest place from Columbus, Ohio that I could conceive, or maybe I was a lion in a previous life. I'm not really sure why, but I became very obsessed with books about Africa. And these three books by Joy Adamson, Born Free, Living Free, and Forever Free, I honestly, I think I read these three books at least a dozen times each. And it was a story about a woman who cared for lions in Kenya, which I thought was the coolest thing I could imagine. So I became, I started dreaming about what it would be like if I would go to Africa. And I didn't know anybody who had ever gone to Africa. I mean, this we're talking in the 60s. People didn't go and travel. I mean, we barely had planes then, OK? I mean, it's a little past when the Wright brothers first flew. But it wasn't as if the airline industry is like it is today. It was very uncommon for people to travel outside of the country. But I started really thinking about what an experience like that might be. I became so, I was so excited when there was a TV show that came on about the same time called Doctari. Doctari stands, is, is actually the translation in Swahili is doctor. If you ever watch an old, old, old Tarzan movie, they're actually speaking Swahili in Tarzan movies. Well, Doctari was the story about a woman who cared for animals. I think it was loosely based on the Joy Adamson books. And I was, 
you know, if it was at 7 o'clock on Thursday, I was in front of that black and white TV watching Doctari every week. I started cutting my hair like the woman on Doctari. I started kind of trying to buy things that were khaki, that kind of looked like her. I really became obsessed about all things Africa. And again, this is all going on in my mind. My family doesn't really even understand that, I, that all this is going on in my head. Just like you guys probably have things going on in your head every day that no one is really aware of. So when I went to college, I went to school at Ohio State, and I actually worked at Kroger to put myself through school at Ohio State. My family could not afford for me to, they could not pay for me to go to college. I was the first girl in our family to graduate from college, so it was kind of a big deal. But if I was gonna go to college, I had to do it on my own. So I worked at Kroger to pay my way through school, and I was a journalism major. And with journalism, you were required to take a foreign language requirement. And so I decided, since I had taken French in high school, to take four quarters as Swahili as my foreign language requirement at The Ohio State University. Well, you can imagine, I kind of stuck out, but it was transformational for me. I had a wonderful professor who told me all kinds of stories about his life in Tanzania. And it motivated and inspired me more to think about the day that I might go to Africa. So, I graduated from school in June of 1977. I worked all summer to save my money. And then in October of 1977, I went off by myself at a time when girls didn't do such things. I was just off on a journey, me and my camera, to Africa. So I went for a month. This is the only picture I, I took. This was at a time where you know it was like pre-digital photography. Um, I have like 700 slides that I took of all kinds of animals and people and all kinds of things. But this is the only picture that I have of myself on the equator. And you know what? I, I have to confess that I still have these pants. And this morning I thought about putting them on, and I realized that they came up to like here, and they were a little snug. And I thought that I'd be super uncomfortable. So. I decided to spare you that. But I do have them because it is so meaningful to me as a, as a person. And I talk about this and I draw upon this experience today. I talked about this experience to our whole company at our annual meeting earlier this year. Photographs that I took from this trip line the conference room that I use within our business all the time because it, is, it was an inspiration to me, the inspiration that I had the courage to act upon something that I had dreamed about for so long. So I am just here to hopefully encourage you to think about the idea that if you can dream it, you can do it. If I can do what I did, thinking about all the kinds of crazy things you think about when you're at this age, you can do this too. So that's it. Thank you.